Thank you for joining us for City Talk. My name is Emily Lofgren and I'm the City of Muscatine's Communications Manager. And here on City Talk, we talk about what the various departments of the city are working on. So today I have Community Development Coordinator Adam Thompson with me. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to be here, Emily. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So what's your background? Where are you from? How long have you been here in Muscatine? Yeah, um, I've been in Muscatine uh, a little bit over three years. Um, I was born and raised in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, from there, I went to the University of Iowa, where I received my undergraduate in civil engineering, and then continue on with my master's degree in urban and regional planning. Um, after graduating from there, I applied for a position in Muscatine, interviewed, and uh, offered me a position, and it's been a great experience ever since. That's great. So, did you ever think that you would end up here in Muscatine? No, you know, all the way through school um, and getting my engineering degree and getting my master's degree, I, I never intended on working in government, local government. I always thought I would be in, uh, in the corporate world working for an engineering company of, of sorts. And um, honestly, I didn't even know where Muscatine was until I applied for a position here. So it's, it's been a learning experience all the way around. Wow, so even growing up in Cedar Rapids, you didn't know where Muscatine was? The only thing I knew is uh, a, uh, a kid from my uh, Boy Scout troop moved to Muscatine, and I, I still had no idea where it was. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was a broadening experience. That's great. So what do you think of living in Muscatine now that you've been here? It's, it's a great place. I mean, especially working in community development, Muscatine is, is a great community where if you have an idea, if you have a passion, if there's something that you want to do, here in Muscatine is really a place that you can get it done. Um, there's so many wonderful people in this town and in this community that really want to help really band together to improve Muscatine and make Muscatine a more lovable community. Yeah, and so aside from your work, which we're going to talk about here in just, just a couple minutes, what are some other things you're involved with in the community? Yeah, a, a big passion of mine and um, really where I spend as, as much of my extra time as I can as, as I coach a, a youth softball team um, here in Muscatine, a, a group of 12-year-olds. And uh, so they, they keep me young and <laughs> keep the blood pumping. Um, but I, I really love working with them. And beyond that, I'm involved in you know, various community um, groups, um, whether it be uh, the Community Garden Association, uh, formerly involved in YPN on the on the chair for them. Um, you know, any time that I have anywhere that I can be of service to Muscatine, to my community, to the place I call home, I'm always happy to do so. Yeah, and that's really great because Muscatine is a place that you have so many opportunities for that. I feel like we have a really active and engaged community. Yeah. So yeah. that when you moved here, it was easy to get plugged in. It was, it was, and, and especially for, for my position of being community development coordinator, um, it, it makes it that much more rewarding to actually be able to pull the community in on the projects that you're working on and get the community involvement. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about your position. You know, what's your what's your job description? What kind of things do you work on? Yeah, um, gosh, you know, I really don't know my job description. I feel like uh, a lot of times it's like, hey, you know, Adam, we want to get this done. Here you go. Go do it. Um, so it's it's fun and exciting from that that you know I'm I'm not doing the same thing every day I do a lot of different things from from day to day and from hour to hour um, but uh, I, I do multiple things for the city um, I would say in general um, managing project management for community improvement community development grants as an aspect of my position, um, whether it be from the community development project, uh, I'm sorry, the CDBG project that we are um, getting close to wrapping up, um, or any of our business uh, development or small business improvement programs and projects that we run in the community, um, as well as uh, airport operations uh, for the city of Muscatine, which most people or a lot of people, not most people, don't even know that Muscatine has a pretty good sized airport here in Muscatine. Yeah, I was actually surprised when I started working for the city and I got to take a tour and see what was going on at the airport, how much 
um, it's utilized and, and what a good asset it really is. It is. It's truly a, a great asset to to the community and and for economic reasons, um, it's really quite vital to our community. Many of our businesses in town, both large businesses and small businesses, utilize the airport, um, the accessibility of the airport for their business operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so in your job, you're doing a lot of project managing. You're doing, you're collaborating with people who are trying to make Muscatine a better place to live, work, play. Um, and also, you know, you're doing a lot of things with grants. So you're doing grant writing and, and putting together proposals for that. Um, so one of the big projects that you're able to get funding for was the CDBG project. And that's the Community Development Block Grant um, for those of you who don't know what that stands Good job. for. Good job. So, so tell us a little bit about that project and what, what you've done with it. Yeah, um, so the CDBG project, as you said, the Community Development Block Grant, um, the funds come down through the federal government, through HUD, and are distributed to the states, and then the states um, disperse the money for various projects across the state. Um, when I took my position as Community Development Coordinator, um, the, the project was ju was just beginning. Uh, my predecessor had written the grant and uh, successfully wrote the grant, and um, they were just in the beginning stages of moving forward with that. Um, there's there, there's many different CDBG subsets of you can get funding for, but our our project was for downtown revitalization. It's a little bit different than some of their other programs that they have, and allows you a lot more flexibility. Um, but our project, we were looking at the 100 and 200 blocks of East 2nd Street in downtown, Musc downtown Muscatine. And we, we kind of entitled this project, our back door is now our front door. Um, along Mississippi Drive, along uh, the riverfront there, there used to be buildings that faced Mississippi Drive, faced the river. But over the years of repetitive or flooding, we had repetitive lost buildings, the buildings were torn down. So now we have the rear sides of buildings facing one of our main corridors in Muscatine, facing our riverfront, facing the Mississippi River, very, very visible to visitors to Muscatine and also our citizens. And most people can probably envision pretty, pretty easily what the backsides of and the rear facades of buildings look like they're they're not maintained to the level of front facades so they, they were in rough shape so the, the hope of the project and the outcome of the project is go in to these buildings with some funding uh, property owners put in some funding of their own and we improved um, fixed up the rear facades of these buildings we put we took all the overhead utilities and placed them underground so that, that ugly web of above um, utilities um, overhead and I don't know if we have a we have, yeah, we have some pictures up here that uh, this is one of the before pictures yeah yeah this is 100 and 102 East 2nd um, obviously before construction you can see uh, one overhead line there it's not as bad as the, the the mess or web of overhand overhead lines that we had throughout the downtown but uh, that's that's a before and there should be let's see that can we scroll to the next one Okay, so this is after. Yep, this is after, and there was there's a significant amount of painting um, throughout throughout the project, yeah. um, painting the decks, the rear facades um, on this particular property. Their elevator um, enclosure was replaced and recovered. Uh, it was really brightened up. It makes it look so much more welcome and inviting. It does, and that was really one of the things that we we encouraged the property owners in picking paint colors for their buildings that. Um, would would hopefully bring a little more life to it. Now, was that mural part of the project at all? That mural was not was not a part of the project. But it was also redone. Yep, it was. And it looks it looks it looks great. Mm -hmm. It really does. It's especially nice because since Second Street's now a two-way, you can see it better. Well. Absolutely. So here's another one. This is behind Sherwin Williams. Yep, this is behind Sherwin Williams. Yep. And you can see the the power lines. Power lines. There. Yep, above ground, and then. Um, we can scroll the next one. Okay. So this is yep so afterwards. After. Yep, buildings are painted and and it, it, on many of these you, you see you see the painting on the exterior, but there's work that went into the building uh, underneath the paint. So whether it be there was a significant amount of tuck pointing um, on this project, which where you go into these buildings and uh, 
you remove, grind out the mortar between the bricks and you put new mortar into them so it um, adds uh, a new structure to the facade, to the face of the building, to the rear face of the building. So uh, hopefully the long-term structural viability of these buildings is improved um, and then uh, the new, new painted exterior on them. That's great. So it's not just you know putting a coat of paint on it and thinking, oh, it looks nicer, but it's really actually keeping it and preserving the buildings. Better. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Now here's another one. Now, now where? Tell yep. us about this place. These are, and I actually, I just mentioned on the last one. I guess another part of this project that you can see when you go down there is uh, we have a new alley surface as well. So when everything was all said and done, we came in and put a new uh, blacktop alley down. Um, there you go. Wait, can one we go more. to the, the next one? Yeah, you can see, yeah, you can see, oh, we'll go back. Messing them all up. You can see a little bit of the, the blacktop there, but if we go back uh, one more image from there, it'll show the before image of, of this building. And, and th this is the, the brew buildings and avenue sub building. Um, so I guess in this after picture, it's the building's quite a bit different than it than it was originally. Yeah. What are some of the changes? Yeah, absolutely. So on this building, um, there you go. The okay. so the first one on the left there, there was it's a it's a stucco faced brick. So stucco was falling off of the the exterior of the building. Um, so we re replaced and patched the stucco on the building. Um, and then painted the facade. The one next to it, we did a significant amount of tuck pointing on that building. Um, so again, where we remove the mortar, um, grind out the mortar between the bricks and put in new mortar. When they do that, they also acid wash the, acid, acid wash the bricks and it really uh, brings kind of a, a new vibrancy to the bricks, and really helps the facade uh, pop. Uh, and then the property owner here um, found a local artist to paint murals. Um, so as you can see there, there's uh, murals in replace of the windows, which is really looks looks great and really pops uh, very nicely uh, and really fits well with the brews um, music venues that they have there so it's, it's a very nice addition and then the avenue sub building is the one to the right uh, on that property they had this um, yeah that yellow fenced in the wooden door there that that facade there was was completely torn out um, and and reconstructed the second story of that, the second floor of that, um, there is a new screened in deck for their uh, tenant to use in that location. And then the lower portion there is a storage area for the brew or the Avenue subs um, business. But it looks so much better than, than what was there previously. And then the facade on the Avenue subs building um, patch and replace stucco on that building and then put a uh, new coat of paint on that building and it really looks looks very nice and and this is just I mean a few images of you know 24 properties in these two blocks that we did improvements to the the, the grant that we got from the state was um, was a half a million dollar grant from the state to do the improvements to these buildings when our engineer or designer went through this and was putting together cost estimates for for what this work would cost and and what we would do with it, the, the total of the work was was well over a million dollars. So there, wow. you know, what you see here is not is not everything that we could do. There, there's more more work that can be done, and and really one of our goals and one of our hopes. From this is that this is mm, uh, a catalyst or a, a step in the right direction to to invigorate these property owners to take the initiative upon themselves too to invest in their properties to reinvest in their properties and beyond just these two blocks we hope we see it extend to the the entire downtown that this is really a catalyst for activity in the downtown for improvement in the downtown and as you've seen as many of the citizens have seen there, there's a lot of things going on in downtown it, it's a it's a it's a great time to be a business owner downtown to be a property owner downtown and beyond that it's it's great for our community members to see that growing and and we've already seen that just in these two blocks, I mean, there's many of the property owners are already looking at ways that they can improve their building more uh, 
they already have many projects planned to continue the work that, that we've begun. So it's many good things are coming from this. Absolutely. It looks wonderful. And, you know, if anyone um, wants to see more, they can just go downtown and yeah. check out some of the backs yeah. of the buildings. And Absolutely. They'll and be pleasantly surprised, I think, when they see how great it looks. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great, it's a great, uh, First time stroll down the alley, I mean, the, just with the electric lines coming down. First time I walked down there, I was looking around like, whoa, it's, yeah. it's just it's so much open and you can breathe and it's, it's just really, really nice and inviting. Absolutely. So another part of the CDBG project um, that we, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about, um, I guess what you can tell, explain where the funding came from for this part of it. Um, but back in that area is also the bioretention cell. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. We can pull it up on the screen, actually, our next slide. So, so tell us what a bioretention cell is and, and the purpose and where it's located. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, and this was the bioretention cell, the stormwater, um, they call it sustainable stormwater practices, green stormwater practices. Um, what well, was really a, a key feature of us getting this, this grant in the first place. Um, not only were we the only project and still the only project in the state to receive downtown revitalization funding for the rear facade of a building, most time it's always the front facade. Mm -hmm. So we were a first in that aspect, but we were also one of the first projects in the state to implement a sustainable stormwater practice as a part of it. And, and what the bioretention cell, what, what our goal is and what it will achieve is it takes stormwater surface runoff from the rooftops of the buildings in the project. And it's not all the buildings. Uh, we implemented this in lot number four, which is the 200 block of the buildings on the 200 block of East 2nd Street. It would also be the 200 blocks of East Mississippi Drive in that parking lot there. It takes the surface stormwater from the tops of the buildings, from the alley, directs it into the bioretention cell, where the cell captures the water, infiltrates the water into the ground um, and in large rain events we'll take excess water and uh, um, evacuate it into our, our stormwater system and there's there's a couple benefits that, that come from this you know first first off um, is, is a water quality improvement that these bioretention cells, um, the way that they're designed is you have your, your organic plants um, on the first layer. Um, and then underneath that you have the engineered soil, which is a combination of dirt, sand, um, compost that filters the water. So particulates, um, contaminants, those types of things that are in the water actually gets filtered out through the, the engineered soil. Um, and then below that we have a rock chamber that captures and holds water to infiltrate it into the soil further. Um, so so we, we, we clean the water, improve the water quality. We are trying to get the water into our groundwater system rather than, you know, our, our current thinking or the current, you know, engineering standard is get the water out of here as quick as possible. Um, and you see it, 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 you know, for, for so long we kept building, you know, larger parking lots, larger buildings, and there's so much hard surface where we, we don't infiltrate water. A hundred years ago, a uh, drop of water would come down and it would, it would sit um, and infiltrate into the soil, and, and we're, just, we're just not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. So beyond the water quality, um, it's also... Um, we're trying to reduce the amount of water that is quickly discharging to our streams, rivers, lakes, creeks, those types of things. And, and the more that these practices are implemented, you, you should see a, a reduction in, in large um, you know, flooding events. And you can manage it a lot easier on, you know, on, a, on a smaller basis. Um, on you know flash flooding events, implementing these practices, but really the the key feature of that is the water quality improvement that you get out of it. Is that um, we're not we're not polluting the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. 
This is a really neat system. It's something that a lot of people aren't aware of or they're not realizing that these are done places. Um, are there some other communities that have utilized the bioretention cells? Oh gosh, yeah. We, it's, it's really becoming a, a great practice across the state. Uh, a lot of initiatives and a lot of support behind it, um, both locally, you know, from our Muscatine City Council and our Muscatine City staff, and we've gotten, you know, incredible feedback from our community members as well. Um, but at the state level and, and nationally, there's there's a lot of support for implementing these projects. Um, some some, you know, neighbors of our I, Iowa City have implemented. Um, Multiple, multiple bar retention cells, uh, swales, rain gardens. They actually, they have a program in uh, Corville, um, in Iowa City, where um, they'll actually help fund private property owners to implement rain gardens on their wow. own property. That will take, you know, the water that comes off of their roof and down through their gutters and put it into a rain garden, uh, where it helps infiltrate and. Um, infiltrate the stormwater into the ground. Um, so there, I mean, the quad, many of the communities in the Quad Cities are doing it, uh, you know, Des Moines, I mean, it's, it's becoming common practice and it's something here locally that through our, our zoning code, we're working with new construction and new commercial buildings to um, implement these types of practices. And, and we are starting to see it more and more. And, you know, and really we're just trying to capture, it's not, it's not gonna work on the major rain events. I mean, there's, there's range events that, you know, you, you just, you can't engineer to because they, they aren't very frequent and they're just that large. Um, so this is really just focused on catching, you know, that first inch of rain, that first inch and a quarter of rain and, and managing that. Yeah, so this is the first of, of many maybe in the future of Muscatine. Probably. This is the first one that we are that we've done as a city, as a local government. There are um, other ones that will be implemented through our um, businesses, um, our commercial businesses in town. So this is the, the first of hopefully many more yeah. to come for, for our community. That's great. Yeah. Very cool. So this is just a really neat project that a lot of people probably wouldn't realize. They just see the, you know, some of the um, grasses and plants and, that are going to be there, and they won't realize what's beneath the surface. So yeah. It's, so it's good to have a little bit of a, the background on what's actually there. Yep. Yeah, and the plants will, the plants are in in the spring. They'll, um, they're native, uh, native wildlife, or not wildlife, native plantings, native mm -hmm. plants that will grow. So that the cell will have some color and it, hopefully it'll look like like a garden and will be a nice uh, breakup between Mississippi Drive and the parking lot and and the businesses there to kind of you know uh, to break up you know the hard surface and the traffic to our, our downtown businesses. Yeah and it's just right there on Sycamore right so it's um, yep. alley number one Sycamore area. Alley number one Sycamore yep absolutely. Great so Adam, thank you so much for talking all about the CDBG project. It's been really good to hear all about that. Um, we can just touch briefly on some of the other things. You mentioned the airport. Um, what big projects have you been working on at the airport? Yeah, today? yeah. So this this summer, uh, really right right before we we started construction on the the CDBG project, we were finishing up um, construction on the airport project. And at the airport, we we finished this year. Um, it's about a four and a half million dollar project completely reconstructing the entire run, main runway at our Muscatine Municipal Airport. Um, our runway is 100 feet wide by 5,500 feet long, so over a mile long. Um, it, it was an incredible project and we actually um, got word last week that the design on the project, the construction on the project actually won a st state level award for excellence in transportation engineering. That's awesome. Um, That's wonderful. It is. And it's just, you know, a testament to, you know, the design firm that we had designing it, as well as um, the city of Muscatine staff that we had overseeing the, the construction observation of it to make sure that, you know, we were implementing uh, a quality project. and. It, it was uh, a great project. Uh, we had a contractor that was there uh, every day on time, working hard, and we finished the project uh, f well ahead of schedule. Yeah, it seemed like it, everything was progressing a lot quicker than 
was anticipated. It did. Uh, it was. It really was a, a quality project all the way around. But yeah, at the airport, I mean, we, like we said before, I mean, the the major companies and businesses in town have uh, have a presence there. That you know, they may not own an aircraft, they may not have a hangar there, but between charter flights um, or flying parts in and out, they utilize the airport in, in some way or another. And beyond that, we have um, 35 private pilots that utilize it. We have a glider club. We have a young um, young Blackhawks, I believe is the name of the club, but it's a, it's a club for, um, for youth that are interested in, in flying and becoming a pilot. We offer classes at, at our airport for uh, individuals that are interested in getting their, cert their private, pi private pilot's license and, and you know, learning to fly. So there, there's, it's a great amenity for our community and I think you would hear from many of the businesses that, that if it wasn't for the airport, you know, they would be limited in some of the things that they could do here in Muscatine. So it's just a, a great asset, a great resource that just uh, even though they may not say it, I think it really helps to um, keep those businesses here in town, keep them reinvesting in Muscatine mm -hmm. um, because they're able to do the business as they need to do business here. Absolutely. It really is a clear asset for yeah. our community. Yeah. And then another big project that you work on regularly is a small business for capable loans. So tell us a little bit about that and what, what you do to help businesses thrive. So I think that's that's kind of one of the themes of what you're working on a lot yeah. in your in your position. Yeah, absolutely. Help businesses. You know, it's it, as I think many many of us know and see um, our, our large businesses in town are, are I mean, you just can't say enough how important they are to Muscatine, how important they are to the citizens of Muscatine. Um, but but beyond that, you got to think about these businesses. You know, a hundred years ago, when they were first starting out, they were small businesses. You know, these were young entrepreneurs, um, small business entrepreneurs that that were starting out here in Muscatine. So entrepreneurship, small business, is really the foundation of Muscatine and and the the great success that we have here in Muscatine. Um, so really our Small Business for Gilbert Loan program is, is a way to, to look back on and you know what made Muscatine great and it is that small business. So it's a way for, for us as a community, for us as a local government to uh, continue to build that foundation that made Muscatine such a great place, made Muscatine the place that it is um, yeah. today. And I guess we have the information here if you're interested in hearing more about Small Business Renewable Loans. Like Adam, you're the guy, right? People can contact yep. you. Um, and so tell us a little bit about what are the like requirements? You know, what do people have to do to, to apply for a loan? Yeah, absolutely. So we have three districts within the city of Muscatine. We have our downtown district. Um, we have our Grandview Avenue district, and then we have our Park Ave district. So the, pro the business has to be physically located in one of the three districts. Um, and what the Small Business Forgivable Loan allows you to do, it allows you to obtain a loan for up to $25,000, forgivable 20% over a five-year period, um, as long as you are operating the business as you've indicated in the application and the agreement that you're, you're operating the business for. And the reason that we look at the downtown, Grandview, Park Avenue, I mean, these are places that aren't the most attractive places in Muscatine to own or start a business, but they are crucial to Muscatine's, you know, the foundation of Muscatine that we we're talking about, that these, these places are important. But many of the, the properties that you have in these, in these areas are dilapidated or they're run down or they're vacant that, you know, they may not have been taken care of the best. Uh, the best over over the, over the years, so this is really a loan to help those business owners get those buildings, get those properties to a level that they they can successfully operate their business. So if there's someone that that's looking to open a new business, and, and it has to be a new business, or it has to be a currently 
existing business, a current business, that's expanding into something new. It has to be something new and significant with the business. But those businesses, those are property owners that, that, are, that are looking for that. And, you know, they may need an ADA access door or they may need a sprinkler system or, you know, they may need a new ceiling on their building. You know, that's, you know, what we look for with, with this program is to help improve the, the infrastructure of the building so that they can operate their business, that they can make those improvements and still have money to to hire employees, to to buy um, equipment that they need for their business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just coming in and, and being there alongside them so that they can thrive and then eventually be hiring employees and, and actually helping, you know, spur our economy on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we, we've had, uh, and it's, you know, we've been doing this for, for Oh gosh, are we almost two years now? Mm -hmm. It's been almost two years. Yeah, it has. Man, time flies. So yeah, we've been doing this for 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 almost two years now, and it's I mean, we really are seeing improvements. I mean, through our our small business creation program, I'm just trying to pull the numbers at the top of my head, but with this program, we we've helped um, through the financial assistance. We've helped create 48, you know, 78 jobs in Muscatine. And through this, we've leveraged a total of like two and a half million dollars wow. has been invested into small business through the small business creation program. Now that's also including our building improvements loan program as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really actually impacting the community in a significant way. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And, and like you said, you know, anyone that has questions about the program, um, you can get information on our city webpage under uh, community development and underneath there you go to small business forgivable loan program and we have a summary of the program the application on there um, you know a lot of your questions can be answered on there but if you have questions beyond that I, I encourage you know the community members to come talk with me come sit down with me and you know and we can help help you through the process you know we want we want these businesses here in Muscatine. It really is the foundation of Muscatine. It's how we're going to continue to grow and make Muscatine that, that, that lovable place, that, that, strong, that strong community that we want it to be, that it already is. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for telling us all about what you do in your position and, and how it's really impacting our community. Thank you for having so, me, Emily. Yeah, thank you all for joining us for City Talk. Um, we really appreciate it and hope to see you next time. Are they cutting it? That was awkward. <laughs>